Welcome to the Jazz Ranch. People have asked me, how do I create endings to songs? So, you know, you need to be able to create endings on the spur of the moment. You know, maybe you haven't rehearsed an ending and you're just playing in a jam session and you want to be able to have a good ending to a song. So I'm going to give you some tips and some varieties of endings for ballads and for swing tunes and for blues tunes and so on. So here we go now with how to create a good ending to a song. Here we go. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch Studio. People have asked me, how do I create endings for my songs? Now, you need to be able to know how to do this on the spur of the moment. In other words, you don't have a preconceived idea about what ending you're going to play, but you have a workshop or a uh, toolbox <laughs> full of ideas and concepts about endings so you can pull them out whenever you need them. So I'm going to give you some ideas about that. And the first category I'm going to start out with is ballads. So I'm going to give you five categories. First one is ballads. They're the easiest ones to, to um, explain and to use. So I'm going to use the song Misty. You know. So the ending is Then you put a tag on it usually. There's your five chord, right? With a flat nine in it. And then you could just end on the one. Put an arpeggio. But that's kind of boring. So let's do something else. Let's uh, create at least five or six varieties of endings you can use, which will delay that 5-1 from happening so quickly. So we have a fee. Four minor. It's like a plagal ending. Plagal would be four to one. This is four minor now. In other words, the C tonic note works with the four chord minor because it's the fifth of the chord. So you want to find chords that are going to work with that tonic note. So another one would be what we'd call the delayed or the um, deceptive resolution in which you go to another chord other than the one. So like it's... Um, up a half step, the A flat. It's a common A flat major to D flat. Then ending on the one chord. That's very common. Sometimes you can just go right to the flat, flat two. You see, so it's a half step above the root. Or half step above the five. A flat. D flat major to the root. Okay, I'll give you another one now. How about this? Now, what is that? That's the flat seven, nine sus chord. You see, and the nine is, is the tonic there. So you have that beautiful sounding chord there. Okay, one more now. I'm going to give you a couple more, actually. I'm going to give you this one. Flat three, then down chromatically. one. So E flat 13, D7, D major 7, C. Okay, the last one I'm going to give you now is this. It's 
flat five. The four, minor, then the flat seven, sus. That's one of my signature endings that I like to use on ballads. I heard Keith Jarrett use that ending on uh, Bye Bye Blackbird, and I loved it. And it's the one I like to use. You can also go flat five and go right down the scale. Yeah, that's another one you can use. So now I'm going to talk about the second category, which is built-in endings that are written in the song. Such as, you know, example would be A-Train, Take the A-Train. You've heard that ending, right? A thousand times on a thousand songs, probably, and it's good. One, three, four, char four, five, right up the scale. It's a typical ending. It's always used on Take the A Train. It's also used on the theme by Miles Davis. B flat now. You can put an after hit on it if you like, or just hit it right on the note. Like that. A short ending is always good. Audiences love those short endings. You see, so that's that's a very typical ending that is sort of written in the song. Now, another example would be Point Sienna. You know, Ahmed Jamal created this famous ending. Then he goes to the five chord. Listen to his recording. And so now, most people that play Point Sienna use that ending because it's so classic. It's a classic ending and it's very effective. It's a short ending. Audiences love it. You'll get them every time if you use short endings. No, I, use, I also use that ending on uh, I'll, I'll Remember April. Like that. They love it. They love these short endings. Um, another example is the famous song Moanin', remember? It doesn't end like this. No. If you listen to the original recording with Bobby Timmons, with the Jazz Messengers, Art Blakey, you're going to hear this. They play the bridge. And it's softer. And loud. Lego ending four. Church. And then the one. You know. So it's it's a tune that can be played in major or minor, but um, I like the minor there. Four one. So the 4-1 is the plagal ending, classic ending, and it's always used on Monin. If you play it according to the original recording, you need to listen to the original recordings to understand tunes as they were originally conceived by their composers. So now, how about the third category here now, blues endings. You know, you're playing a blues tune, whatever. Let's take it in F. Now, so you got... All right, now what is that? That's a classic blues ending. The 
you see? So it's right up the scale now. One, three, four, sharp, four, five, and then flat two, dominant, on the one, dominant. Remember, the blues are dominant chords now. So you want those dominant sevenths in there. And that's very typical, and it's used a lot in, in uh, ragtime, too. That kind of, you know. You see that type of ending? Now, that's just... What is that? We're in the key of F now. F. F diminished. G minor. With an F in the bass. To F. You know, it's just a very simple thing in the left hand. You want to learn that ending. It's a classic ending to Dixieland and so many blues tunes is to use that ending. Now we're going to go to a fourth category and standards. And I'm going to use the song, I Love You. So the ending is... So, two in dominant, five, 13, two, one. So now how do we delay that? Or how do we can tag it? You know, we can go. We can tag forever like Sonny Stitt. Or we can just end it with a progression. So we can use that same, you know. A train ending or the theme ending, or we can use that descending ending. You're on the five, so you just go down a half step to the half diminished, and then down the scale. And the melody note is going to work with all these chords B half diminished, B flat minor six, F with an A in the bass. A flat diminished or A flat seven doesn't matter. G minor seven, G flat major seven to F. So you have, and you can play it rhythmically in a variety of ways. It could be that's very typical. That and that rhythm. Any drummer you play that with that knows anything about rhythm will play, know that you're playing that ending and, and compliment you. So that's the good rhythm. Now, another one would be just to go the half step below the root or a whole step below the root and like, now like this, we're, we're in F now, okay. So, no shot. Very simple and effective, right? Another one would be, like I said, it, up the scale. So you can descend, you can ascend, you can ascend from a variety of ways you can. So with swing tunes, you want to have that in your in your bag of, of tricks, of endings. You want to have that. Now, also for swing would be the Count Basie classic ending, which is, right, so. Now, what is that? It's, it's a, I'm going to put, in the left hand, I'm going to put the sixth of the chord. We're, in the, we're going to end on a C chord, right? So. A C6. So we're going to end with D minor, D minor chord, but with a C in the bass to C diminished or E flat diminished, however you want to look at it. C6. That's all it is. And F would be uh, this. Yeah, so your bassy ending, you want to listen to the bassy recordings to understand that. But those are the notes. Uh, 
It's usually up in the upper range like that. Sometimes it's just as simple as that, but it's very effective. It's a short ending. Sometimes it's an after chord, like an after chord, like that. So there you have, in a short lesson, a variety of ways that you can end tunes. So you want to know the classic endings that are written for the songs, and you want to know how to invent some endings using these formulas, as, as I would call them, for good endings. And a short ending is always going to be very effective. So think about that as well. You know, like, like that. You know, are you... Uh, simple endings, people love those. Okay, so if you learn something, please write to me, and I'd love to hear from you. Here we go with a sign-off. Thanks for tuning in and watching this video. I hope you learned some things that were beneficial to me. I would love to hear from you and get a response if you learned something. It's very helpful to me, and I will respond to all comments if you give me enough time. And until next time, I'll say from the Jazz Ranch, Hermie Dressel is always saying, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.